you can continue working on the previous project file or open 6G. With so many great audio apps for the Macintosh, you might wonder why you'd use Final Cut Pro's voiceover tool to record a track. First of all, it lets you record directly to your timeline. Second, you can define in and out points to limit the duration of your recording. And best of all, the person being recorded can see picture in real time as they speak. You can loop an actor's muffed line months after the original shoot. You can record a voiceover professional. You can even record your own voice as a placeholder or scratch track while waiting for your producer to finally book a session with that voiceover professional. The only limitations are your audio interface, the quality of your microphone and preamp, and the recording environment. Just go to the Tools menu and select VoiceOver. Since we already had the mixer open, this creates a new tab in the Toolbench window. The first step is to select your audio interface. On this particular system, there are three to consider. A Mackie Firewire interface, a Firewire camcorder, and the built-in microphone. If you plan on using the XLR input of a Firewire connected camcorder, you might get this message. Not to worry. Just hit OK, go to the View menu, and turn external video off. Then you should be able to select your DV camera as an interface. Since we're just recording a scratch track for timing that will be discarded once a proper track becomes available, I'm going to select built-in microphone. This automatically sets the input. And your sample rate should conform to your sequence settings. And remember, Final Cut is generally a lot happier working in 48 kilohertz rather than 44.1. You can adjust the gain of your input signal if the level is too low or too high. And if your first take sounds off, the offset drop-down can compensate for any latency introduced by your interface. The next step is to set sequence in and out points to limit the duration of your recording. Hit function left arrow to go to the beginning of the sequence. And let's set them on the fly. I want the in after the first major downbeat and the out on the second one after the male backing vocal. Like so. I love to dance. Once we've defined the duration, we need to set the track destination for the voiceover. Voiceover tracks are targeted with the A2 source button. And since our sequence out comes before the beginning of the first interview clip, Audio Track 3 works nicely. The track assignment is reflected in this area, where you can also name the audio file that will be created and stored on your chosen scratch disk. In the upper area, you can hit the leftmost review button to play the sequence in throughout in order to rehearse your voiceover. The sound cues checkbox in the lower left produces an audible countdown over five seconds, giving beeps on the counts of four and three, and silence on five, two, and one. These beeps are heard through the headphone output and not recorded with your track, and headphone level can be adjusted here. When you're ready to record, hit this button. Listen for the countdown and wait for the status area to turn bright red. When it does, say the line, we caught up with Annie in her Los Angeles studio. Give it a try. We caught up with Annie in her Los Angeles studio. I love... Let's boost the gain on the new track and play it back. We caught up with Annie in her Los Angeles studio. I love to dance. If you're not happy with the take, hit this button to delete the last recording. Or just hit record again. Final Cut won't overwrite your work, but start recording on the next available track down. 